Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to Real Talk with Michaela. Happy New Year. I know it's April 2019. I know, I know, I know. It's been a busy start to the year already, but I have an exciting guest, I think, to make up for it being April. And with that being said, let me introduce Miss Sarah Smith from Canada. She is an amazing rock star singer in her own right. And I really brought her on today, not just because she's a cool, amazing rock star singer. I mean, that's cool. But I'm saying because, you know, she's all about inspiring others and being that change we wish to see. And kawinky dink enough, we were doing a, something together that was a collaboration for a mutual friend and colleague of ours, Neil Raymond Sperling, uh, for World Peace for Chocolate. So that's kind of what connected us. And so here we are. And we're hopefully going to share some uh, insight today with y'all. Whatever you guys take from it, good, good. So welcome, Miss Sarah. How are you doing today? I am just fantastic, actually. I'm, uh, I'm loving this morning. Uh, in Canada, it's, it's sunny. It's starting to become spring. And uh, this is a good time of year for Canadians. Hey, well, then I need to come and visit because you need to tell me when the good times are. And if this is a good time, then at least I'll mark the calendar to know. <laughs> I think there's always like, you know, there's so many different people in the world. And some people love the winter. They love that bright white snow and the bright sunshine. But I'm just really into heat. Like, give me the me heat too. and the sunshine and I'm there. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so you're telling me I'm going to have to laugh because you just said heat. My other <laughs> co-host, Mark Dunn, is from Canada, too. Love him to death. <laughs> Where the heck are you talking about heat? Because I lived in Seattle for like 16, 18 years. And uh, oh. you're in Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, Seattle's on the West Coast and, and it can get right. a lot of rain and a lot of, you know, it doesn't get that hot because it's near the ocean. Ah, right? okay. But, yeah. but where I, I live near Toronto, I live in a town called London, Ontario. And okay. it is hot here in the summer. It gets to be like, if you look up celsius to fahrenheit i have no idea what it is but it's okay. 40 degrees celsius so that's can gotta get be like double to, so maybe 80 i think it's plus 30 and then divided by two maybe crap 70 you 35 math this early girl i don't know i don't know what it is maybe <laughs> okay but hot right hot <laughs> yeah it's no what is it oh it's my 110 gosh. 110 oh my, no way no way yeah oh my yeah. gosh <laughs> That, okay, you're okay. Oh my god, I did not. Okay, now I'm not gonna clown because I really and thought then, Canada was frozen. Okay. I know everybody thinks that, but then on top of that, you have this thing called humidity. And I'm okay. telling you, man, you walk out into the you walk out of your house and you are just instant sweat. You're just one ball of moisture. Oh my and, god, <laughs> so you're basically telling me Canada is also like Florida? Oh wow, that oh it's cool. hotter. It can get hot here, man. I'm telling you, it's okay. like a rainforest. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to come visit, but thank you for warning me because I would have just bought Tundra gear. No freaking summer Hawaii shit at all. Apologize. Excuse my French, but I would have never guessed and I would have been in bad sorts. So thank you, Miss Sarah. Okay. Good. Good. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys. I hope you feel the laughter. I hope you feel the warmth. Me and Miss Sarah have been trying to get this going for a minute and here we are today. <laughs> now, apologize. We're going to apologize ahead of time. She is driving, fitting me in, us in. And, uh, we shouldn't lose connection. If we do, we will be back on the air. But Miss Sarah, okay, I've been blabbing in your ear and listeners are hearing all of this and they think like, I act like we know, they know who you are. So maybe if you can shed a little bit more insight, go ahead and toot your horn today because I read your profile on LinkedIn, just a little bit that was on there. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's but besides being accomplished, just what you're doing, I believe, um, you know, you actually have a reasoning, I guess, behind your music. Maybe all artists do. I don't know. So you, I'm going to let you talk for you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I'm a singer and I'm a songwriter and I've always used songwriting as a way out um, of me, you know, a way to get my feelings out and also a way to connect with a higher power of some sort that can drive me and lead me in my life. So, you know, I use songs as, as uh, a medium of um, celebrating our purpose on life, you know, finding our passions together and um, talking about some hard topics such as um, recovery, um, mental health issues and um, addictions and things like that. You know, I think that art is, is such a beautiful form of creation that it allows us to get out of ourselves and to reach bigger audiences and to relate to each other as human beings that are all going through these same struggles together. You know, so really, I just, I, I use music as a tool for helping me travel, connect with people, and uh, get out of myself. I love it. I got goosebumps. I mean, and it mm. definitely has. I wanted this, I'm, I'm jumping around just because based on the things you say, but, you know, you mentioned that 
you know, some of your music was, you know, it came from wanting to address uh, mental health issues, addiction issues. Um, I don't know if that's something to touch. I don't want to touch on it heavily, but I mean, you know, people have been there. You mentioned that in your profile, you had walked through that. So it, there's a brief mention. I mean, do you, why, um, why do you think that's important? Because I don't know about Canada, but here in America, there, that's an epidemic that's happening, the drug addiction, like heroin, meth. I mean, it's getting bad and rampant. And we've got our youth coming up, you know, what would you want to say to them? I mean, you know, hopefully steer away from that. I mean, I don't know what the solution is, but it's just, you know, I, I honestly don't really know what the solution is either, but I myself got caught up in addiction. I came from a, a small family, a, a church going family, a farm family, a close okay. family, a loving family. And I still ended up addicted to drugs and alcohol and, you know, I don't think it has to do sometimes with as much as your upbringing as it has to do with um, our education to okay. our youth. And I think that we need to educate our youth that um, we need to follow our, our our hearts following. Like this kind of life that we live can be so empty. You know, <sighs> this this working life, this this edu like going to university and working and your whole life is towards your career it can get very empty and I think that one of my things that I'm learning from traveling around the world is that we need to live we need to experience life we need to experience connecting visiting with each other one-on-one -on -one, face to face we need to experience um, passion in our hearts we need to experience um, soulful love we need to experience higher consciousness Imagine if we could teach higher consciousness to our youth. Agreed. And make that actually part of the curriculum as a necessary <laughs> study, right? <laughs> it makes things less empty. You know, that's our, like, I, I feel our purpose is to find peace, serenity, and happiness and to pass that on to everybody we meet. And that doesn't come easy. That's a lot of work. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of work to find that. And I, right. Right. I, see, well, I seek for it at a young age, and a lot of people they don't they don't know to, to seek for it until they're unhappy and depressed and wanting to die. Right, you know? I know. It's so back. Words. I'm just going to say backwards, but it is. And, um, you know, the thing is, obviously, we know already we're not even we're not even at our end of our journey yet. I'm about to be 39 this year later. And I can't say I know it all. So imagine if we had had that preparation ahead of time. Oh, my gosh. I'm not saying we wouldn't have ran into any issues or learnings, but it would have saved me. I think a few of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, speaking of following your heart, um, you know, that's one of the things I've been doing, uh, especially in these past four years, almost come Easter be a four year anniversary. And one of the things I have on my wall, Miss Sarah and listeners out there is, um, you know, something from the thrift store. I love thrifting, by the way. Uh, that's helping <laughs> our planet right there. <laughs> uh, it, it says follow your heart. And above that is I, you know, when I left Seattle, I really didn't take much of my life with me. But one of the things that took me was this little tiny little statue. You, I don't even know what the name of it is, but it's a hallmark a bunch of these statues of all kinds but this one in particular is this little boy holding a heart by his okay. heart and I had gotten okay. that when my son wasn't even born yet like I, you know about to have him so I've had this little statue for like 19 years and anyways I put that right up in my apartment this new apartment I had up in fire just to remind me right when I walk in that dang door girl and everybody is to follow your heart because you know a lot of times we let our head mess us up we let outside voices external noise mess with us and I think that's huge you know um, what you're saying and following our heart how did you speaking of which Miss Sarah how how did you meet um, Neil and do this whole world piece for chocolate? Why was that important to you as well? So Neil and I, we, we just have always had this connection face to face. Um, Neil, if you meet him in person, you will find yourself full of peace. He's got eyes that speak right directly into his soul. And he is a beautiful man. I met him at a show and he became a fan of my music and became you know uh, a member of my audiences and eventually we grew a friendship together and he's been very supportive of my music online as well as in person and that's how I know Neil 
Oh, very nice. Okay, so the way I met Neil as well, you got to meet him in person. I can't wait to meet you both in person. I know it happened one day. Um, I did a show a couple years ago as well. I um, can't remember the actual title, but it was along these big topics here. I mean, because Neil's been, I, would, I, I can't really label what we people like us want to do, but I feel like, you know, I call myself a light bringer. And when I say that, I mean it in, in the sense of, you know, helping to bring the love, bring the light. And uh, light, though, is not always just about like, lovey light and like rainbows i found out <laughs> it's also yeah man i'm serious because sarah y'all i don't know if you guys people would know me mentioned back in the day i'm like i'm like shira tigger rainbow bright kind of gal my personality was <laughs> seriously i mean i'm godzilla before 10 a.m but i'm really like that and then after these four years of like trying to help wake up the world and that's why i created the show is um i realized you have to walk through the darkness to know the light i mean you can't get it's almost like if you want to even talk about relief, use a religious pre uh, pref you know, preface, uh, you can't get to heaven without going through hell. I'm serious. I, I feel like we kind of oh, have yeah. to go through some of that um, for humanity to get where we want to get, unfortunately. So, yes. Mm hmm. Um, and so, speaking of which, Miss Sarah, I love two of these songs. I, I don't know how many you've written, my dear, in all of your lifetime of writings but one of the ones I really liked was the stand-up one and I wanted to ask you what when you wrote that what made you write that yeah so I was actually a part of the Canadian military um, straight out of high school I decided that I wanted to do my degree at military university okay. because for me growing up in a small town I didn't have a lot of funds my parents didn't make a lot of money and I thought um, you know how am I gonna afford university but I was smart and I really wanted to get an education. So I decided to go to military university because they pay for your university degree. Right. And they pay you to go. So, you know, you get paid money and you get a university degree at the end of it. Um, that was my thought. So I went to university and I was there and I was learning how to do all these, these trainings and I was learning how to be in the military. And I loved the challenge and I loved the teamwork and I loved the drive and dedication it took. I loved um, persevering and, and becoming a winner. But in the same way, I felt in my heart like, what am I doing here? Um, I can't be somebody that hurts another human being. I can't do that. And I, I realized at that point that, that I was learning some techniques and some skills and that one day I might actually have to use them on another human right. being. Oh my God. And so I quit. I quit mm -hmm. the military and I decided to pursue my music at oh. that point. Wow. And but, it kind of gives me shivers because. Oh my God, yeah. I, <laughs> because I really wanted to change the world and I thought that being in the military, I could change the world. I thought I would fight for my country and I would, you know people would be proud and, and I could change the world. But mm -hmm. in the end, it, it went against my soul role for myself. My, mm -hmm. my own inner beliefs were challenged and I could not do Follow that. Through. So this song Stand Up was about, you know, instead of fighting that, that war outside of us, yes. let's, let's fight that war inside of us. Because oh my gosh. beneath our skin, we are all strong. We are all light we are all truth and we need to find that inner that inner militant that inner warrior <laughs> all right yes. that's what that's yes. about oh my god girl and like then that, it's about yeah. it's about Good. bringing people together with that message oh, i that is like yes i feel like that could be a world theme song for sure <laughs> one of them on the like the playlist cd or whatever yeah girl that one's up there man i'm nominating it y'all okay <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I really did have goosebumps and shivers. I know, okay, my front door is open, but still the point is it really did. And the reason I say that, Miss Sarah, is because, um, you know, I, okay, I come from a military family as well. My mother, my father, my blood father, a lot of family friends, all military. I personally knew I just wasn't going to do that. Well, not because of I wouldn't fight, whatever. I just was like, 
I'm not, it was more like, I'm not good at taking orders. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm better at like <laughs> serving my country and the world in other ways. So that yeah. was the reasoning. I, and, uh, but I have mad respect for the military for what they have to do. But like you said about having, I, I basically came to the conclusion that there's got to be another way to fight this battle and not with bloodshed. And, and so, like you said, there's another way to be a warrior, another way to be a fighter. And so I love how you, what angle you took. Now, uh, me, obviously, I didn't get into that, like the military. So for me, uh, my angle to fight, fight, I guess, initially, I was just on regular social media saying, wake up, world, wake up. Uh, right. At least I wasn't on the street with a sign, you know. <laughs> but I'm just saying the point is nobody's really listening. Kind of, It didn't seem like it anyways. Um, and those that were, they already know what's up. But I felt like with with shows, with even like with music, the point is, again, another reference to like religious stuff. You know, they say in the Bible, in the beginning, there was the word or whatever. And it's like talking about sound and, you know, creation. So what we speak out, it, it manifests. And so I figured if I do my shows um, and I bring on guest speakers from everywhere, you know, not just America, that way maybe we can kind of start to get more of an understanding, be real, not just what's on the freaking news, because I don't know about Canada, but in America, our stuff be run, <laughs> you know, by select individual high uppers. Um, yeah, you know who you all are. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where y'all are. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and this is what I realized, too, is that, you know, we can't stop the evil that's being put out there in the world. It's an information war game, basically. And so you can't stop the negativity that's being put out there every day. But what we can do is put our positive out there. And that's what we're doing. And that's what I'm trying to do. So here we are. And thank you. Beautiful. Okay, talk to me about, okay, here's the, here's the second one that I had listened to, um, was Trust the Ride. And that one, I really loved it. Like, it, it's, I don't know if you're playing in a studio or whatever, but you guys are like, you're playing with your guitar and you guys are like just dancing around and just really happy and positive. But, it, and it, it makes, it's like, a, it made me cry. I'm embarrassed, but I'm just saying, the first time I listened to it, it did make me cry, but in a good way, like a tears of joy wow. kind of thing. Um, wow. In the sense of like, I don't know, because, Okay, for me, and I'm going to, listeners, don't even clown, okay? Maybe you guys have your own weird way of receiving messages from spirit if you're even kind of spiritual. But for me, I'm busy going, going, going all the time. And the only time I pause is either when I'm doing my massage, because I find that when I do that, that's I consider that sacred. And yeah. it's like my temple when I work with people. And so that's the time I'm quiet. And, um, you know, and the other time. So it's just feeling that moment of you know when you actually are just pause and uh when i listened to your song uh, and this is when you had connected i it was it, it really resonated and it's almost like spirit reminded me hey there's other people on the journey that are fighting the battle too you're not only one out here and even if you don't feel like anything's happening things are under the surface happening and so that's why people like you all the guests that have come on to this show um, really remind me, you know, why we do this and that we are making a difference bit by bit. Absolutely. Um, I think that number one um, is that we need to find our, our own truth in ourselves. We need to find out who we are, what we stand for, what, we, what pain we have. We have to find out, you know, what our passions are. And we have to find out just what our light is. And when we find that, our authentic truth, that is when people will be magnetized to us and we all can together then create this beautiful, you know, higher conscious living. And, and it, it starts with one person. It starts with you. That's it. Okay. Okay. So, Miss Sarah, okay. And I totally believe your sentiments. And now I'm going to speak even more real talk because I have a conundrum with that whole situation because... As far as we know of written history that they've put out, and that is what we know as history, there have been people, great leaders over the years, trying to do the same thing. I mean, Gandhi. Even. I mean, like, you know, I'm just throwing that name out there. But I'm just saying, okay, believe in that premise one person. Why? I'm just asking you. Why do you think this far, at this time of humanity's timeline, why haven't we gotten here yet then? If, if it only takes one person and if there have been one persons doing this all throughout history, it seems like. 
Because I think it has to do with, um, it really honestly has to do with connecting. So okay. for instance, so I'm, when I'm on a stage, mm-hmm. all my years of, all my years of leadership and self-seeking and looking for, um, passion and writing music and learning my skills and developing it has put me on this stage. And there might be a, 50 people looking back at me. So a hundred eyes maybe right. looking at me every night, maybe a hundred people in the audience, maybe a thousand. And they're all, these eyes are looking at me and in these eyes, they're looking at me, but it's just a complete boomerang. So it's a reflection of each other. So okay. when they're looking at me, they're seeing something in me that they want to, that they like, or that they want to be, or what I think it is, is hope that they, right. they can also get through struggle and, and, you know, and I see through them the same thing and it feeds me as well. I see hope. I see their smiles. I see the delight in their eyes that glean when they hear a certain song or whatever. And that feeds my soul, but I'm one person and I can only affect those eyes that I see. Correct. And okay. So with that being said, um, Okay, I almost lost my train of thought, but I'm trying to go along with those lines. So with it's just you, that we have to connect. We have to connect with the eyes we see. We can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's, there's soul power, of course. There's like energy that flows from soul to soul to soul all over the universe. But I think that connection and and leadership has to do on the visceral, human, physical connection, right? Eye to eye, face to face. So say Gandhi. I never met Gandhi. I never saw him face to face. He didn't change my life. I didn't look in his eyes. <laughs> right. So you're saying getting out there, seeing the people, actually, I mean, I'm not saying Gandhi didn't do that in his time, but I'm saying, you know, for today, in, in today's era, I guess, it's not just about, you know, hearing the stuff. It's going out, touching people, you know, reaching out that way too, yes? Yes, like there's a difference between putting an album in a, in a, on, on vinyl and listening to it or going mm-hmm. to a concert. The concert right. makes you feel something. In comparison, right, that's true. Okay, so, okay, I'm, maybe I'm getting too deep, Sarah, and if you don't want to answer any of this, you can just be like, no, Michaela. <laughs> no, I like this it, is, I like it. Okay, well, the reason why I'm asking this is, okay, Okay. so I am spiritual. I really do believe there's more than the nine to five grind, okay? I do. Yeah. But, but I am also one of those people that are like, well, I'm not just believing um, just because somebody says some woo-woo stuff, you know, that that's that. I'm, I'm trying to fit the logic and the heart, and I know we're trying to go more into heart shift time, which we are, but helping bridge that gap for those people that I don't even think like that. Okay, so you're talking about, again, us fixing ourselves, our internal, and that will change the external environment. Okay, I believe that. Okay, like, you know, whatever the observer wants to observe, he's going to observe. But my right. question then is, when there's like 8 billion people on this dang planet, and if we want to all observe something different, then how the heck, Sarah, are we going to get to world peace? Like, for example, in certain countries, they think it's okay to abuse women the way they do. Um, or, you know, just all these things. It's just like, okay, how are we going to get to world peace then if they keep thinking in their mind that it's fine, and then we're over here, it's not fine. You see what I'm saying? That's my conundrum. I think, I understand what you're saying, but I think uh-huh. world world peace is, is attainable only... Okay. Because it starts within one person, within you, Regardless. as an individual. Okay. okay? So okay. you have to live your best life with no expectations mm-hmm. of the outcome. Okay. And just and just you know, ask for to be a conduit as best you can and affect as many people as you can throughout your day, living right. your best life. Um, I think it takes. Uh, it's going to take um, just patience and love and um i don't think that it's a fight that's not um you know there's lots of results happening there's a lot of people that are awakening also nobody wants to be told anything nobody wants to be told you need to do this you should do this you have to do this i don't want to be told that um (laughs) yeah you know nobody wants to be so people are on their own journey they have to find their answers their own way Yes. That was so, been frustrating, Sarah. And I've had to yeah. learn that myself is that you have to, like you just said, um, and you know what? I, and I, I had, I'm happy with that. I think that's the resounding message. I don't know if you've felt that this year or heard that from others, but I've heard that this year has really felt for everybody truly a year of self-discovery, kind of a selfish, but it's not a bad thing. Self first. So I think people are really resonating with that theme this year. What do you think? Um, I don't really know what anybody else is doing. 
I really don't. I'm, I'm caught up in my own little routine right. that I do and taking care of myself. Right. You know, that's it. And, and I just feel like, um, I'm just, for me, I'm absolutely blessed. I just feel like I have this network of love and support around me that seems that toxicity is leaving my life and being replaced by huge encouragement, supportive, loving people. That is so nice. Okay, I have I have tons of questions I could fill your ear up with. It's at we're at like twenty five minutes. How how much more time can we have with you, Miss Sarah? Well, let's go whatever. Like we can go up to forty five minutes if that's okay. Yes. All right. I'm gonna take that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So here we go. All right. Now, um, I'm not. I don't know if you're if if you would consider yourself a celebrity or famous or not. I mean, reading your profile, I think you're kind of famous. And you guys, since Miss Sarah didn't toot her horn, I'm just tooting her horn because I want to. <laughs> I've read um, just some of the things you've done, my dear. And um, she travels all over the country, all over the world, y'all. At least 300 shows a year. She did win uh, Best Rock Artist in 2018, or was was that one and nominated, dear? Was that the one you won? Um, I'm sorry. I've just, I've won, I've won a bunch of awards and, uh, I can't really remember <laughs> all of them. Right. The- okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to name what I see on this profile here. So you guys, I just now mentioned, so best rock artist for 2018. She also got best singer and songwriter for 2017 at the Jack Richardson music awards. And then she's also has the best adult contemporary at the Toronto independent music awards in 2015. And again, this is just a few things that are on here. Okay. So what I wanted to ask Sarah is about being like being known out there in the world now, uh, more so than maybe before. Do you feel like, um, you have a responsibility or is it, or do you just choose that you want to help be a, a, a certain kind of role model for your fans or the youth? Cause I, that's a big argument, uh, that you sometimes you hear about like, well, it's not celebrities responsibility, raise no kids or, or put out any good morals. Um, what do you think about that? Um, I think that seems like a lot of pressure on a person. I really mm-hmm. do. I think that um, for me, I feel that I just need to be um, the best person that I feel I can be, you know, for me. Okay. Um, for instance, um, uh, you know, I want to make sure I'm healthy. So I have to find out ways to be healthy. I have to exercise. I have to eat a a good diet, a beautiful food. Um, and I know that that's going to feed my soul. I need to meditate. I need to pray. I need to go on a routine of working out every day, doing yoga or whatever it is that I choose to do. So mm-hmm. that's the things that I do for myself. And, and hopefully, um, you know, the things, the choices that I'm making are coming through in the way I live mm-hmm. and the people that, that met, meet me or, or contact or connect with me feel that, um, that power and if people want to know what I do I'll tell them mm-hmm. and I'll talk to them I don't I don't drink or use drugs or smoke cigarettes or try not to put substance in my body anymore either mm-hmm. and and I share my story with people that want to know and there are people that want to know so so my choice as somebody that's maybe in the limelight is to not put any pressure on myself to do anything for anybody else right. but to do it for me mm-hmm. first and then in the morning I ask that um, I can serve the world in a way that I made it to serve that day. This is what I ask in my meditations. Uh huh. You know, I love that. Yes. I think that so. makes things a lot simpler. And um, I know that I have made it harder even in my own life about wanting. I'm all about being in service. And uh, I don't know if it's just I'm a life path nine. <laughs> if you guys are into numerology and stuff. But that's just part of my nature, kind of. But it, it, it can be taxing and draining. And I think um, really when you fill yourself up, like you said, you have this just outpouring naturally that you don't even ha- It won't be. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not energetically at all giving, but it won't be as you know, pulling from you where you're constantly, you know, tired from this. Right. Like people say to me all the time that I'm a giver and I think, Mm -hmm. I I don't feel like I do anything to give to people. Like I feel like I'm, I'm just living my life and, uh, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The people are like, no, you give of yourself. You give of your music every night you perform, (laughs) you give of your heart, but that doesn't feel like work to me. You know what I mean? You love. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, So I think that if you can naturally give of what you can give in life and Mm -hmm. help, like ask for it, that it will serve the world. 
Like, what can I give to the world rather than what can I take from the world? Uh, nice. I like it. All right. Okay. So, you know what? I've been, we've, I have not mentioned you're, you're, you're a band. You're in a band. It's a Sarah Smith band. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who are your members of your band, Miss Sarah? Well, I have, uh, I have my members uh, in, in my Canadian band that I use to travel okay. with. And um, they're, they're called, uh, you know, Bobby's play, Bobby Reynolds plays the drums and Guy Miskelly plays guitar and Ken the Zen plays bass guitar. And um, these guys are the guys that I, I record with and we play all the local shows with. Okay. Um, and then I also have a, a Euro band that I take to Europe with me. Um, you know, I just, I really wanted to take guys that, uh, first of all, guys that could dedicate um, plenty of time to me and my project, guys that were great people and guys that were really interested in traveling the world. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not easy to travel and play music and leave your family for months on end. It's really not easy. So I wanted some, some people in my life that would be grateful and would wake up every day with a smile on their face and, and know that they were in a position that a lot of people wish they could be in. So my Euro, my Euro band also consists of Ken the Zen on the bass guitar and okay. Denny Gauthier. He's a singer-songwriter as well. Denny Gauthier on guitar and uh, John Huff on drums. And he's also a, a writer and he wrote a book of our um, travels in Europe as well. So um, that's what that's what the Euro band is. Oh, very cool. Now, this book that he wrote, is it already out? It is. You can find it on my website. It's called November, A Month on the Road in Europe with Sarah Smith. Awesome. Ooh, yeah. I want one. If I order, can you guys sign yeah. it for me, por favor, please? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. All right, I'm down. Okay, so I'm jumping around jumping around i'm just getting so excited oh my gosh i have goosebumps this whole time dear i'm glad i'm wearing a jacket and my boots <laughs> speaking of which what size shoes do you wear what size shoes do you wear oh this is embarrassing i wear like a like a nine and a half ten. Oh my god okay then it's embarrassing we're both big feet okay we're big foot girls i have the same size feet kind of yeah basically and i have wide foot feet by the way because i'm flat footed y'all so now Me you know too. You, yes oh, oh you have flat feet too no way yeah yeah maybe it's just like we're meant to be grounded here on earth or something yes I yes i thought it was from my island or nature walking on the sand or something that's funny as heck <laughs> oh my god y'all so now you know some tmi about me and miss sarah we both are big I, foot, flat footers. i was definitely <laughs> not walking on the sand in the islands <laughs> <laughs> no you were in the canadian freaking uh like what is it you say like trop well you kind of were islandy in the tropics canadian tropics that i never heard of in my life <laughs> to now <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh shit. yes yes okay so I'm okay so this is again random now all right I have three children my eldest is 19 my little ones are now nine and seven so I have boy girl boy um right now at the moment I think it well Miss Sarah it's inspiring to inspire all of our youth everybody on this planet is huge but I, I want to take a moment just for a second because I just want to I want to, um, I feel like you are definitely one of those women that I would consider an, an empowered woman, a strong woman. And I believe that's something that needs to rise up within women around the world, uh, not to be a feminist or take over, but that that part has kind of been like mass suppressed. And I feel like women's or the female gift, I guess, or that feminine um, there's something valid about it that needs to come out more of. And I just wanted to see if you had anything to share that you'd want to maybe share about anything like that or for the girls or the women today, what you want to say to them specifically? Um, well, I just remember, you know, watching my mom, my mom, my mom was like a very, um, powerful and creative woman. And she would sing in the church choir and she would always sing solos And then she became a leader of the church choir. And I loved watching her lead the choir. And I loved seeing the passion that drove her every night after work. She would throw her work bags down on the ground and quickly cook us up dinner and then quickly (laughs) drive to the church so that she could be this leader. Uh And, you know, that drove me. And so now here I am on a stage and I look when I see little children or little girls or even um, teenagers or even those, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70 year old women that are in the audience, <laughs> they're looking at me. I can see that they're inspired to see a woman in power on a stage. And, and it's a beautiful thing. You know, we, we can all relate to that. We can all say, 
wow, look at her doing it. She's rocking this, right? Look at her go. <laughs> and it's just a, it's empowering. And I think that as women, we motivate each other. I think guys, guys are all beautiful. I have so many sensitive, beautiful guys in my life. Uh-huh. And I think that they, I think that they're very independently able to gain their own strengths within. Like uh, most guys, if they're on a spiritual mission, they, they figure that out on their own. They look, right. they seek for, they, they seek spirituality on their own. They seek po- po- political uh, reasoning on their own. Women, we like to talk about it. Yes. We talk about it. We, we <laughs> bounce it off each other. Like, Are what's you right? Cool? Are we not right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? What, do I look okay? What's yep. This, what, you know, that kind of stuff. Yes. So mm-hmm. I think that's why we can, why we love to see women in power is that it motivates us and it shows us that we, can, we all have this power within us. I agree. And you know what? Thank you for saying that because, you know, here it is. Um, you're over in Canada, or that's where you're from, and I'm over here from America, well, Guam, USA specifically, where America's Day begins, supposedly. But what I'm saying is, you know, we're from everywhere, and it doesn't have to be, you know, a fight with each other. And I know, even up till today here in, in the States, you know, girls, like women in general, like, they're always worried about, oh, what is she doing? Is she coming up on me? Okay, y'all, I can see if you're going to maybe, if she's going to try to take your man, maybe you can be a little bit upset. But then at the same time, you also got to look at not just that person. I mean, that's a whole nother issue. But I'm just saying we need to stop <laughs> fighting with each other. It's just like, that's so old already. I feel like that's such an old record. You know, it's time for some new stuff. Well, could you imagine if, even if, even if we could imagine this, that nobody owns anybody? Yes. And that we're all free and that there's no possession and that we could just allow each other to be loved by everybody. Could you imagine that? There'd be um, nothing else to fight about. <laughs> right. But then I guess maybe then I guess, huh, this wouldn't be our realm dimension, right? Or shift or something, right? Because this is that world of duality. I don't know what's necessary and unnecessary, but I feel like you can't take out part of it because it's, it's there for reasoning. Um, speaking of which, could you imagine? Okay, have you heard, this really, really shocked me back in the day when I looked this word up because it means something different today in this era, but have, do you know what the um, original word for virgin meant? Mm, um, or what do you think mean... virgin means? What, what, what is your current understanding, or the only, what is your, the meanings of virgin to you that you know of currently? Uh, purity. Okay. Innocence. Okay. Uh, it also means you haven't had sex yet. <laughs> okay. Right, right. That's the big one, right? That's the big, big one all over the world. Virgin, she hasn't gotten, gotten up in here. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we know of, right? Okay. Right. So I don't know. Probably maybe now, maybe eight, eight years now. Yeah. Eight years ago, I found out um, during you some lost exploration. Your <laughs> Damn it, girl. Well, shoot. If that would have been 30, man. Wow. Nah. I mean, I guess I could have waited for all of the lamos, right? <laughs> I should have waited. Just kidding. Anyways, speaking of which, okay, but but since you went there, since you kind of went there, <laughs> okay, the reason y'all, okay, I'm telling another TMI, not too much though. I mean, the only reason why I know virgin means something else was during a little sexuality exploration. That's a whole nother show, y'all. So you can go check that one on the uh, Sex Rx show with Michaela. That's a health wellness show, different show. Okay, but point is, looking up the word virgin, I found out that virgin was not what we know it today of, of purity, innocence, and never having had sex. I mean, that's, that's, that, that is one of it. But what it used to mean way back in the day, it meant a woman who was beholden to no one but herself self and that's freaking huge oh wow yeah so independent an independent woman was called a virgin yes i mean <laughs> yes that and look wow. at how they fucking sh- i'm sorry i just cussed but you know what <laughs> <laughs> it's what it is that's real talk right there you guys because i mean oh i was so irritated when i well i was a mixture irritated of how they switched that word up trying to mess that word up completely they totally tainted that word <laughs> yeah that's crazy <laughs> Yes, but then at the same time, it was kind of exciting to know, wow, there was a word, there is a word that was in the in the known vocabulary, that there was such a thing, that they knew of such a thing of a strong woman. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, now they're just called witches. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Well, we'd be a lot of things. Miss Sarah. Oh my gosh. I, we, we got like five. I'm going to, I'm going to take every second of it. We still got like five <laughs> minutes and I've been loving every moment. Listeners. I hope that you are enjoying this. Miss Sarah, well, we're here and I don't forget. Um, what is your website by the way? Or, I mean, I know they can YouTube you Sarah Smith, but I mean, what, how can they find you easily? Yes, uh, sarahsmithmusic.com. Sarah has an H on the end of it, sarahsmithmusic.com. And, you know, I've got to tell you something. I, I'm all up on the social media, but um, recently my yeah. Facebook got hacked, and I lost all my contacts, all Ugh. my photos. Even my business page got hacked. Heck. I lost my, my 7,000 fans that I had built up over the years, Ugh. and um, I had, like, a bunch of followers. And, you know, you know what I realized? What? Who cares? Who cares? Oh, my God. I can't believe you said that. And why do you say who cares? Why do you say who cares? Let me hear what you have to say. Because I honestly felt a little bit of relief not having to um, check it all the time and, and, and stuff like that. I just want to see people now. I just feel like I want to visit. You know, if you right. want to see me, you know, please come see a show. And you can, you can check out all my shows on my website. Please come see a show. Wave to me. Say hi to me tell me how you are share your stories with me and let's connect yeah really so you're do you have time do you guys have time usually like do, do fans usually want to stay around and come and say hey and you have time for it or you tire the heck out i'm absolutely available 100 percent. wow you don't hear that all the time <laughs> it's usually like are you gonna buy something <laughs> no Just buy I'm, something. A, I'm here and and that's the thing that i really want to just um, let people know that I'm just a real person that, uh, you know, I'm here. I'm, I'm willing to listen whenever I can. Sometimes I'm busy and I can't, but I, I like to, as much as I can, be there. Aw, you know, that's so serious, Miss Sarah. Like, honestly, look at I've had like a 41, 25 second minute conversation show <laughs> to share the listeners. And honestly, we've just been shooting the shit. Yes, I said shit. I think that's allowed. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'm just saying I'm so happy and like just putting out this positivity into the airwaves. And that's what I had started to say earlier was just us doing that. Um, besides just having different people from all over, just the words that we're speaking, the energy we're putting out there. We're already affecting things as we're speaking. Things are already shifting. And that makes me smile even more because it's in the workings, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And and if you're going to be a light bringer, you're going to be a healer in this world, if you're going to be, um, you know, anybody that uh, can affect anybody else, then we need to take care of ourselves, number one. So take care of you. Seek what is it is that makes you happy and find your passion and do it. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for the reminder. I, I, this is like at least, I'm, I think, the third message um, from Spirit, I think, recently that says go, it's okay to focus on you. And I think that's another thing I just want to um, uh, remind everybody on top of what Ms. Sarah said is give yourself permission. A lot of you are hard on yourselves. I am. <laughs> I, 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 in fact, I'm fine going to try to save the world's problems. But like Ms. Sarah said, you know, focusing on us, that is enough. That You are doing enough. Um, yes. When are you coming out here, Miss Sarah? Or do I got to come and find you? When are you coming <laughs> this way? <laughs> um, I, I actually, um, in, when you're a Canadian, to work in America, you have to buy a work permit. Okay. And it, it costs quite a bit of money, and you have to have a bunch of shows booked in a row. So uh. I, did that this, I did that this year, and I had a great time, and I'm planning on doing it again next year. Okay. Um, I have some dates in Texas coming up, but uh, nothing. You're in L.A., right? No, actually, right now, oh. guess what? I'm in Oklahoma, and you all Oklahoma. You know, yes, but guess what, y'all? I've been here two years, and I will tell you, I am liking it. They're like country island folk. I'm, I'm not oh, kidding. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Yes. Well, so when I will. I will. The vicinity of so you said somewhere in the states. I will find you in the states or wherever. But it, I, I'm going to look it up and I'll post something for you guys after this show when I put it up, you guys, and see where she's at. Um, whether it's in the states or not, because you all are not all here in the U.S., so that's okay. Yeah, I try to hit the U.S. Um, for one to two months a year, and mm -hmm. I also do Europe for one or two months a year, and okay. then the rest of the time I'm in, usually in Canada or working on new albums. I love it. I love it. Oh my so. gosh. You know, okay. So I think I only have 
Oh my gosh, I don't even have a minute, so I won't ask that. I'll ask it on a separate <laughs> note. I randomly saw this Angels and Anchors song on your profile. I'm like, what's that about? But I'm going to stop with that. And I guess, um, hmm, I just want to say, is there anything else that you would like to share with the listeners today about, you know, being the change we wish to see? Yeah, I really enjoyed what you said about that if you want to find light, that you have to experience the darkness. Yes. And um, I just want to say that being vulnerable is a beautiful thing. And if we can just admit our darkness and we can talk about it, um, it will create the change you're looking for. Oh, my gosh. You know what, Miss Sarah, and to the listeners out there, I just want to give you all a big, big virtual hug. Um, you know, I just, I'm like, seriously, I would have never thought I would be talking to all of y'all today uh, or just who I've spoken with in this time frame. Um, I started off my shows for free and actually still am, but coming up y'all usb channel is one platform there's another one in the works that i can't talk about is hush hush but it's coming and what i'm saying is all of this was not for naught and uh it makes me happy to know that again if you want to see something you you know you just keep forward you believe in it have the faith you know and have love for what you do and and that's enough and so i just want to say thank you miss sarah for bringing uh, hope and love and reminding that into my own heart, into the, those that listen, whether they're going to listen today, tomorrow, a few years from now, that, you know, it touched somebody. And that's a big thing. It doesn't have to touch billions of people or millions or whatever. One person. And yeah. that's enough. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I appreciate it. And I want to say thank you to all your band members, your two separate bands. Awesome. Thank you guys for helping Miss Sarah rock this world. I yes. Can't wait to watch you guys and listen to you guys and just actually join in. And anyways, you guys just enjoy the week ahead. Big, big hugs. Take care and have a blessed rest of the year because I'm feeling it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Bless. Take care. All right. Take care, you guys. Be safe. <laughs>